about dogs on BCTV is supported by the Berks County Kennel Club and by the Berks County Dog Training Club. Good evening and welcome to the Berks County Kennel Club's program, All About Dogs. Hi, I'm your host, Pat Mock, and it's March, so what better breed of dog to have on than an Irish setter? So my guest is Pat Lyons, and she brought her young boy with her. Uh, he's only a nine-month-old puppy, so you can see how big he already is now, right? <laughs> Anyhow, so how popular is this breed? It used to be much more popular than it is right now, right? It was very popular in the 1970s. Yes. It was the number three d dog in the country. Right. Um, and there's a lot of backyard breeding going on, and yeah. they bred in some serious health problems. Really? And the breed, first of all, shouldn't be in everybody's house. Right. And secondly, that the health problems got to be really difficult. So the reputable breeders um, cut back on what they did mm -hmm. and they started being very careful who they sold to yes. and very careful who they bred to and now we got a great breed. Very good, okay? very good. Because I was just talking to some people today and they said an Irish Setter, I haven't seen an Irish Setter in years. But you know, so obviously it's not nearly as popular as it was. And they are active dogs. Oh yes. And obviously from Ireland. Now, what were they supposed to do in Ireland? Were they just hunting dogs? What did they hunt? They hunt upland game. So that's quail, pheasant, woodcock, and they're good at it. Oh. <laughs> okay. The, the show dogs have a reputation for not being able to hunt, and that is just not true. Right, right. If they're, it's, if it's they're bred in, it. yes. His, but, his mom had, or his grandmother had field points. She won a stake. Uh -huh. uh, she had her junior hunter. Um, one dog further back had a senior hunter and a bunch of gun dog placements, and uh -huh. another one had some gun dog points. And they're basically showbred dogs, so yes, yes. they can do it. Yes. We he can, can do probably anything, can't do it, we? but we don't know yet. <laughs> well, I'm sure it takes a lot of time and a lot of money to, you know, not yeah. only put them in the breed ring, but also to do the performance events with them. But they love it. Yeah. Well, they love just being with us. They uh -huh. just what actually what does setter mean? Because they have the Gordon setter, the English setter, and the Irish setter. They all look basically the same. Uh, yes, okay. different in color, but a, a setter is a all lot. Right. A set is occurs when a dog finds a bird and instead of pointing the way you're used to hearing it uh -huh. they drop down on their belly oh and when when and point the bird with their head yeah and that was because when they were first bred to do this um, they weren't hunting with guns they were they were throwing not nets over the birds oh. so if the dog has got his head up and yeah. his tail up that right. interferes. That's exactly so right. These dogs may set even today, okay? Huh, how um, about that? I never knew that. Often, often a young dog who hasn't been trained will find a bird and will set Maybe. by instinct. Yeah, wow. So why then did they do the, the upright position they instead got of? Yeah. Well, if, you're, if you can shoot the bird, uh -huh then the dog doesn't need to duck down to get away from the net. Okay. And if he finds the bird and he tenses up and stays standing uh -huh. and he stops, you can find him and then find the bird because he's he's, he's telling pointing, you right where yes, the bird he's is. Pointing where the bird is, right. So but they don't they don't flush the birds, right? They just or do they? Not if we can help it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see. Okay, the, so then the flushing spaniels do that. Right, the right. idea with these is that they go out, they find a bird, and they freeze and they point it. Uh huh. The handler goes in, flushes the bird, and then the bird, if, if you're really hunting, the, shoots the bird. Okay. The dog then gets sent to retrieve the bird and brings it back to the handler. Oh, so they do retrieve it as well. Oh, they do. Oh, very good. Very good. But um, they're not supposed to chase. <laughs> It says here in the I, fine print, right? I, I said not supposed to. Yes, <laughs> yes. Now, is this 
between the different setters other than color. Is there a big difference in, in yes. the different? Yep. Oh, really? Yes. There, oh. There are some common factors, okay? Mm -hmm. They're all reasonably friendly. Mm -hmm. They all like kids. They, they're, they're all fairly easy to live with if, if you can blow off the energy. You have, yes. to, you have to get rid of the energy. Right, right. But um, the English setters were bred to hunt in England where the ground is a little different. Okay. And they ended up with a little different temperament. They're, okay. they're a little calmer. Uh -huh. They need their sleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tea time. The Gordon setters are, the, the English are a little smaller than this and a oh. little, usually a little lighter bone. Uh -huh. The Gordon setters are not taller, but they're heavy boned and they were bred to hunt in the He's, he's doing you moors, more. in the moors of Scotland, uh, where it's kind of rough country, uh -huh. and so they're a little more hardy. These dogs are running across open country through fields, and the idea with these guys is that they cover a lot of ground to oh, hunt. Okay. So they're a little finer boned. Mm -hmm. They're structured not much differently, but okay. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, Gordons are, should be personal gun dogs and stay near their owner most of the time. Oh, the English okay. run a little bigger. Uh -huh. And these guys are supposed to do what you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> and not chase birds. Uh -huh. <laughs> so would this dog be a, a good dog for a family? If you can blow off the energy. Okay. They need a lot of energy. so. A fenced yard is a good idea. Yes. Um, well, for any dog, but a fenced yard, especially for an active dog. Or, or a large place where they can run. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, people have managed to live in city apartments with, a, with an Irish setter quite well. Right. But you have to do things to get rid of the energy. That's exactly right. Some of that could be just using their brain. Okay. Teaching them games and to do mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, They need mm -hmm. a job. Right. They they get they're quite smart and they're very inquisitive as you've noticed. Yes. And um they have a lot of fun. Uh-huh. Uh but you need to keep them busy. Yeah. So people play games with them. They hide things on the couch and get them to find them and okay. uh, you okay. know, you you, you Right, right. You right. can't just put the dog on the couch and leave him there. Yes. So they're good for active families. Okay. You know, hiking families, that kind of thing. Oh, or, yeah. Or yeah. a family with uh, a couple of boys. Yeah. Uh, that would get rid of the energy yeah. in a hurry, wouldn't it? Well, the other thing is that, that they're, they're friendly. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're sporting dogs, and they're supposed to be friendly. Yes. They're, they're not going to make good guard dogs. Right. You break in their house, they will lead you to the refrigerator <laughs> and show you where the meat is. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Or where the jewels are, right? Where the jewels well, are. On the other, on the other hand, I think if you were to attack me, he might tell you about it. Uh huh. These dogs virtually never start a fight. Right. But they'll finish one. Yes. They don't. It's unusual for a pack of Irish setters to have to to be fighting. Oh. Or okay. or to fight with strange dogs uh -huh. unless the other dog starts it. Yes. 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 But they will finish it. Mm hmm. And yeah. in the in, you are such a pretty boy. <laughs> packs of of stray dogs that are loose in cities and, and mm -hmm. areas. If there's an Irish setter there, it's almost always the Irish setter that's the leader. Oh, okay, okay. They're <laughs> smart, they're inquisitive, and they're very inventive. Oh. So we'll find the food, right? <laughs> they, well, they have kind of a weird sense of humor sometimes. <laughs> okay. So then, because of the exercise, you would not recommend this for an older couple. Sure, I would. Oh, okay. okay. With, I mean, within, yes, within, within reason. reason. Right, right, right. But not like a retirement community. Well, they're probably well, too big for a retirement community. If, Although, I guess if the people walk. If the, well, if the person had the dog when they went into the retirement community, mm -hmm. they would probably adapt well. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure a young puppy is totally appropriate. Mm -hmm. In the end, I have to tell you, he's got five-week-old puppies at home. Oh, okay. Brothers and little brothers. Uh-huh. He hadn't met them till this past weekend. Oh. And I had them in a pen in the kitchen, a YRX pen, uh -huh. and walked him by because we were going somewhere. And he fell down on his belly, 
put his nose in the pen and kissed every one of those puppies and oh, he was wow. he was very sweet and very mm -hmm, gentle mm -hmm. and that's what they're like yes yes I, I mean I once had a, a friend go to an event that I was at and I had been asked to bring one of the dogs uh -huh. uh, so I took her and he had a daughter that was four or five years old who had never seen a dog before oh my yes I handed her my young lady's lead and they went for a walk Wow. And the lead never got tight. Mm -hmm. It never got tight. Yeah. But uh, he went anywhere she wanted. She went, my, my dog went anywhere the little girl yeah. wanted. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, they're great with kids. Right. Very good. Where are you going? Huh? We He's can't leaving. see you back there. Come back here. <laughs> come, come back Shauna, here. come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> come on. Then, because they are inventive, are they difficult to train? You cannot train them the way you train a lot of dogs. Mm -hmm. For instance, most herding dogs are trained to, you know, and golden retrievers, you can throw that thing forever and ever and ever right, and never bring right, it back. Right. Okay, you take a ball and you want the Irish setter to fetch it. You throw it out, you take him out there, tell him to bring it back, mm -hmm. you show him once, you throw it, the second time he'll go do it. The third time, he'll say, we did that once, let's do it this way. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Which I guess is why you don't see very many Irish stutters in, in obedience, right? Actually, they're very good at it. Mm -hmm. But you, it's not that they won't do the exercise correctly. It's right. that you have to train them right. differently. Right. They're not a Labrador retriever. That they'll continue to do the same thing over and over mm -hmm. and over and over. You, anyway. you, you train a little lightly. Mm -hmm. One of the things about them is they don't forget. Okay. So you don't stop a training session on mm -hmm. an error. Okay. Because it'll be there the next time. Yes, you, yes. You've yes. got to fix it first. Yes. But um, they have a reputation for not being bright, and that is really not true. Mm -hmm. What they'll do if somebody is a little heavy-handed training is they'll just shut down and yeah. quit. And quit. That's exactly right. But if... And I, I think, too, in a lot of different breeds, you have soft, quote-unquote, dogs. Yeah that they will do that. You know, some of them, mm -hmm. yeah, you can train forever and you can be pretty heavy on them and they, they don't yeah. care. But these, a these, lot of the breeds, mm -mm. These are a little soft. Mm -hmm. you, you don't want to be rough with these dogs. Right. And right. if right. they think you're bossing them around, uh, they're likely to uh, maybe find a way to put the screws to you. Mm -hmm. And they're good at it. Mm -hmm. um, I had a... <laughs> I placed a dog in a home a long time ago, um, the husband and wife, and the wife called me after about a month and said, I, I don't know what to do. I need to talk to you about the dog. I may have to send them back. Oh. Okay, and I said, why? And he said, well, my husband's having trouble with them. And I said, what kind of trouble? And she said, he's teasing him. And I said, if your husband's teasing that dog, I'll take him back. She said, no, you don't understand. <laughs> The other way around. <laughs> he comes in for work, sits, sits down, gets a drink and a newspaper, and he gets engrossed on the thing, and the dog walks up and whaps the newspaper out of his hand and runs away. <laughs> okay? You will pay attention whether you want to or not, right? You know, so, I mean, they're, they're inventive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're, they're beautiful, they're cute, yes, they're yes. smart, and, and they, they can, only come in this color, right? They only come in this color, right? and they can be a handful. Yes. They come... The standard says chestnut or mahogany. Mm -hmm. So they come from fairly bright red to dark like this. Okay. There's, there's okay. a spectrum. Okay. Okay. Um, you want your shoes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> you are a puppy, aren't you? When do they grow up? About three, three and a half? About 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about 12, right? They stay puppies for a very long time. Right. Now, he'll get a much longer coat than this, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. But with the hunting dogs, I no. mean, with dogs bred for the field, they look totally different than these guys. I mean, just your field dogs. The hunting dogs were generally not bred for a confirmation standard. Right. Now, this is changing because there are people that are, are trying to do dual dogs. Right, and, right. And they're watching the standard and, mm -hmm. and trying to do this. But hunting dogs, a lot of them were not bred to a standard, and they've, they've ended up with a dog that's smaller 
and less coat, yes. and the temperament's a little different. Don't chew the desk, please. Um, temperament's a little different. They're very active. Um, they will run very far, very fast. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, they're just a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've seen a couple of them, and it's like, they don't even look like the same breed. No. Well, they, they really don't look like the same breed. We're not sure they are. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So, now, what, what about grooming? Do these guys, once they get the coat, I'm assuming it's a double coat. It, actually, it's a double coat, but not like you're used to with your, your um, working dogs with okay. your, and, or your herding dogs. Right. Okay. There's an undercoat that we really tend to strip out. Okay. and leave it laying flat. Mm -hmm. um, they don't shed like a Labrador would. Okay, okay. Yeah, they sh when they shed, it's long hair, but you don't, you don't have little short hairs all, all over, over the place. Um, and we do kind of pull the dead undercoat out, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's not quite like this as a grown-up coat because this Puppy coat's a little rougher, okay. maybe a little curlier mm -hmm, than mm -hmm. it would be normally. Okay. But for grooming, if if you're if you're grooming a pet rather than a show dog, well, even for show dogs, you tend to take the hair off the top of the ears. Uh huh. Partly because the standard says that the ear should be at or below eye level, and it 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 looks better that way. Yes. Yes. And you take the hair out from underneath the, underneath the neck mm -hmm. again just so it's cleaner okay and then just neaten up the feet okay and the rest of it okay now if, yeah. you're, if show dogs get more but yeah you don't now, need to do now that why why would you why would you do that is is it something that like with the poodles they cut the poodles because they were going in water and they were yeah. keeping the joint yeah. joints warm you're, 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 so is that the same with with the setters yeah, yeah. you you don't want to take most of the coat out right right on the other hand if you've got really long coat uh-huh um you worry about burrs and things right, and right. shortening it up right helps and a that's bit. what i thought with underneath the throat you know you wouldn't get yeah, your because that's underneath. where you'd get <laughs> right you, that's you exactly that. right the head's you know down and going yeah. right through the the burrs and you trim the feet a bit you'd like hair around and between the toes uh -huh. but not really right thick stuff that's right. going to get not tangled. like slippers so right. you take some of it out right 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 um so what are the health problems with this breed <sighs> Hopefully none, but it isn't true. <laughs> right, that's, no, there's, uh, there's no breed that doesn't have okay. problems. They're large breed dogs, so bloat, okay? Really? Oh. Gastric distension with volvulus is yeah. one of the things, any large breed dog, and yeah. any deep chested the dog. Deep chested one, right, right. Mm -hmm. There's a significant incidence of seizures in the breed, although it's getting better. Yeah, I and mean, epilepsy. Yeah, epilepsy. Wow. And there's a fair incidence of hip dysplasia, which came partly from all that overbreeding in the 70s, and that, which has been largely eliminated, but mm -hmm. certainly not entirely. Right, right. Those are the main, okay. the main ones. Okay. Yeah, so they don't really have any specific Irish setter traits that you would need to look out for as far as health. There's one that I can think of, and that's... Um, Progressive retinal atrophy. Oh, okay, um, okay. It was in the breed quite badly in the 70s and early 80s, mm -hmm. and they ended up with a DNA test to tell if there's a. You have to you have to have two genes to get the disease. Right. Mm -hmm. So they came up with a test that would identify carriers. Oh, and and blinds of right, course. Right, but. So if you can identify the carriers and you know you've got a carrier, you've got to be really sure you don't breed to another carrier. That's exactly right. And you'll never produce a blind dog. Right. But that, that was a problem. Yeah, it's, yeah. Again, it's largely eliminated. Good. Not, not, not 100%. Right. And, and do you ever eliminate a, a trait 100%? Usually not. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I know I had an old vet that said, you know, to make sure your dog is clear of, of the disease that, you know, the, the problem that you have, you need to go back at least five generations and make sure back at least five generations it's clear. 
and then you got a pretty good chance. Yeah, but even that might not work. Yeah. You know? Right. That's exactly right. Um, it can always crop up. But the, the recommendations are that the these dogs get DNA tested. It's just a cheek swab every two or three generations mm -hmm. just to be sure that there wasn't an error that it didn't sneak in because right. that's devastating. Yes. Oh, my God, yes. That's terrible. Yeah. You know, um, and if you've never had a dog with, with especially mm -hmm. with seizures, it's it's very You don't want to do that. There is, I think, probably not a high incidence, but there's a, there is an incidence of low thyroid in these dogs, oh, too. Oh, okay. That... Well, that's you it's know, not a manageable. big problem. It's right. not a that's, big problem. That's that's a manageable problem. Yeah, it's not right. a big problem. Right. But uh, why, generally, hmm? why did you select this breed? I don't remember not wanting one. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> big red. You read big my, red, right? My, my parents. One was of British ancestry, and the other was of Irish ancestry. Okay. So I, I got a little interested yes. from that standpoint. Yes. But yes. I was done the first time I saw one of these. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, they, they are impressive. Now, well, they're, they're nice dogs to be around. Mm -hmm. this, this dog has a, a history, right? He's, he's, he's Polish on one side and, what, Swedish on the other? <laughs> no, his father was bred in, in Sweden and imported to Poland. Okay. And the young lady that owned him, um, his parents have come here and live in North Jersey. Oh, okay. So I got to see him as a fairly young dog and liked him a lot. Uh huh. And so when it came time to breed one of my girls, mm -hmm. um, he was a logical choice. Mm -hmm. And we, we actually shipped frozen semen over to do the breeding and we did not get puppies. Oh. Well, and then, he came over here last spring uh -huh. in person with his owner, and uh -huh. we got a breeding, and Good. there it is. Yeah, <laughs> there okay. it is. <laughs> so we got to see how you do in the breed ring, right? His, his daddy, um, unfortunately, it is now no longer alive. Oh, wow. Well, he went back to Poland, uh -huh. got bitten by a tick, Oh my! And died of Babesia, which is a tick-borne disease. Yes. Which we have here. Right. It right. killed a bunch of dogs and people around here though, this oh, past my summer. Word. So. Um, yeah, you think of, of, of uh, the Rocky Mountain spotted fever, but that's not really, you know, mm -hmm. it's that's, bad. That's but, one of them. Mm-hmm. But this one, the the Babesia is really. Yes. Hey, yeah, don't that, chew, that. don't chew the cord, okay? <laughs> Show the toy, but not the cord. <laughs> Here, it's take all, the it's all tangled up. <laughs> now he's comfortable. Now he's comfortable. Yeah, there we go. Right. So, about how much exercise does he get? When you when you say they require well, a lot still, of exercise, well, he's still a puppy, so there's a limit right. to what you but let if, him if, do. If I'm considering getting this breed, mm -hmm. what what do I have to look forward to? Well, you could jog five miles a day. Well, that, that's going to be out. I mean, you I mean could especially have, if you, I'm working. You could have a backyard with a couple acres in it and let him run, especially if there's another dog to run with. Uh -huh. um, it's very hard to get these guys tired. Oh, okay. His grandmother, um, when they were puppies, there were three in the litter, and I, I did a lot of field trialing then, which I'm kind of not doing right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and we went to a walking field trial, and I entered each puppy oh. to run in two or three braces each day for two days. So I did something like six or eight braces. Well, his grandmother did all the runs with that she could, that, that were hers. So mm -hmm. it was like she ran four, five, six times that in two, in two days. Wow. Her brother and her sister were about half dead and couldn't finish the, the last brace. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were just exhausted. Yeah. I couldn't get her to come back at the end. <laughs> oh, my word. So I never saw her get tired, wow. <laughs> ever. Wow, wow. Now, he's not, the, not yeah. he's, you can wear him out. Okay. But Is he, it because he's a puppy or? Partly, because, be, partly the, because he's a puppy, but he, yeah. he's, he's not quite as wild as she was. Okay, okay. Um, 
you have to, if you can get them to really spend the energy mm -hmm. for part of the day, yeah. they're usually good the rest of the day. Okay, you, okay. You just, you have to, but you can't gently walk down the street with a dog on lead for 15 minutes a couple times a day. And okay, that, okay. That's, that's not going to do they it. Got, they got to go to the, you know, the fence yard. yard and mm -hmm. the dog park, although mm -hmm. I don't really like right, the right. dog park. Yeah, the dog park, um, you can get lots of diseases from the dog park. But those those things, you know. Well, we, 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 we see he's now gotten his second wind. <laughs> well, yeah, third wind. He didn't lay down and go to sleep, did uh -huh. he? Nope, nope, nope. And he probably won't. Yeah. Well, maybe on the ride home. <laughs> well, that's different. So you, the, the five-week-old puppy's there. Hmm. They're the same bloodline then as yeah. he is? Okay. Oh, yeah. They have the same mother. Mm-hmm. Actually, they have the same father. Okay. Too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. He has, he has a lot of energy. Well, I guess approximately how much did it cost? <sighs> okay. You can buy one or adopt one for a couple hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And you'll pay for that. Yep. Uh, in this area, a, a nice puppy will go for somewhere between fifteen hundred and three thousand dollars. Okay. That sounds like a lot of money. But it's already been health tested. It's, it's not a lot of money. The parents have been health tested. The temperament of the parents is known. Right. You can pretty much predict what the puppy right. is going to be like. Right. Um, so you you know what you you're not likely you're a lot less likely to get burned with a health problem or mm -hmm. with a with a dog with a bad temperament right you right. know you go get this dog and the next thing you know he's biting the neighborhood kids or something right you're not going to have that happen or you're less likely to right and an, another thing i have you yeah if i if i buy a puppy from you i have you for the rest of the dog you life. you have the breed if you if you buy from a reputable breeder you have that breeder forever that's exactly right that's um, exactly right and that makes the difference it makes but, a big difference because you've got a resource to tell you and they will what's all, back there what can right. happen and they will also take the puppy back yeah if for a, oh know, absolutely i had a stroke and, and well bring the puppy back you know anybody yeah. any anybody that gets a puppy from me can send it back anytime they want that's exactly right um but you're other, paying that for yeah. you know you're paying yeah. at least two three four thousand dollars for a a doodle of some kind and you get you got nothing, nothing. You get no pedigree, you get no health certification, you get nobody to help you if you're having problems. It, it, they you, certainly won't take the dog back. You walk, you pay three or four thousand dollars, you walk out of the breeder's house and you've got a mixed breed. Yep. You've got a mutt. That's exactly right. The other thing about doing this from a reputable breeder is, you know, you get a puppy. Mm -hmm. You had him in the house for two weeks. He gets really sick. Mm -hmm. You're gonna pay whatever it takes. That's exactly right. Yep. Oh yeah, I would pay for you. Yeah. Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would. Yeah. But you, 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 it's more expensive to buy the cheap dog. That's exactly right. It's more expensive to buy the cheap dog, especially now when you go to the vet and you end up with a bill almost two hundred dollars, and where the dog is, the dog is healthy. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Just for a checkup well, and, the, and the injections, the shots. Sure. But. Yeah, but so. it, it's um, the so-called preservation breeders, and they're in pretty much every breed right now. Yes, they are. Are people yes, that are, are trying to preserve the breed characteristics, mm -hmm. right? So that and it looks breed, like what it was breed supposed to, to be. the established mm -hmm. standard. Yeah, and keep these dogs the way they're meant to that, be. That's exactly right. And, and you know what? To do the job they were meant to do. Mm -hmm. But you know what you get when you get one of those? Right, you got it. Oh. Well, thank you very much. I guess that's our program for this evening. <laughs> it was nice meeting you, Shauna. Sha Shauna. 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 Okay. I'll, I'll get it straight eventually. <laughs> that's that's a little well, now Shauna. he's feeling very comfortable and he doesn't really want to leave. But no. for, for this evening, good night. <laughs> well, I'm going to pack up all his toys and he's going to go. Yes, yes. <laughs> good night.